Hello everybody, Randy Steifer here from ConservePhoto.com and today we got another lens gem edition. And we're covering the Sigma 150 to 500 millimeter f5 to 6.3 with OS. This lens is, I would say, in my bag, but most of the time it's not. It's attached to my camera because I like shooting wildlife more than anything else, and this is my primary wildlife lens right now. And you can see why. One of the big reasons it is is because it is a bargain. This lens is $729. Brand new at B&H right now. You can pick it up used for $650. Obviously, the people selling it used don't check the new prices. That will probably come down. You just simply are not going to find a lens better than this without spending over a thousand dollars. Even its closest competitor is three hundred and fifty dollars more expensive than this lens. That being said, let's take a look at the pros. As I just said, this lens is obscenely cheap for its performance. Second one is it has built-in OS. Sigma has left the OS in even on the Pentax and Sony cameras which have built-in image stabilization in their bodies. And this is a great thing because optical stabilization is better than in-body stabilization. I'm not saying that the in-body doesn't work. I'm just saying that the optical works better. And number three, when used within its limits, it can be very sharp. I'll get to those limits in a minute. In fact, I'll get to them right now. Let's move on to cons. Cons are this lens is soft, wide open, and soft at 500 millimeters. If you try and take a photo at 500 millimeters and f6.3, you are going to hate the results and send this lens back. This lens, really, you should consider this lens a 150 to 400 millimeter f5.6 to 7.1. Because if you shoot it those limits, you will get sharp photos. If you shoot it wide open and you try and use the 500 millimeters, it's not going to be sharp. But for the price you've paid for it, being able to get out to 400 millimeters is still remarkable. The other con is that this lens has an 86 millimeter filter thread. That means if you want to use filters on this lens, they're going to be expensive. They're going to be... 30 bucks for just a UV filter to protect the front element. They're going to be $100 for a circular polarizer. So there evaporates some of your savings from buying this lens. My simple solution, I don't have any filters for this lens and I don't use any filters on this lens. It works great without them and I keep the lens hood all, on all the time. It's a huge hood and that protects the front element. With that, let's take a look at a couple of examples that I've shot with this lens. I've got hundreds on my website, but here's two up. Here's a scrub jay sitting on a fence at Neary Lagoon. You can see details in the individual feathers are remarkable in this shot. This is not even cropped in a whole lot. So as you can see, this lens is capable of great sharp photographs when you use it within its limitations. Here's another shot, female mallard with her little ducklings. This again is at Neary Lagoon and you can see that there's quite a bit of detail and nice catch light in her eye. So again, this lens works as long as you use it within its limitations. Treat it like it's a 150 to 400 f5.6 to 7.1 lens and you won't be disappointed. And that's our show for today. Have a great day and get out there and enjoy some nature.